Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I am now answering question number uh, one from the Solomon L C3 collection, which is also question number six from my end of topic worksheet um, on functions and graphs from my P3 collection. And um, this question is about functions and graphs. And question one, part A, asks us to find the range of the function f, which is defined as 2x minus 3 all over x minus 2. And it tells us that x is an element of the real numbers and x is greater than 2. Okay, so we've got to find the range of this function. All right, so now, in order to find the range of a function, we have to try to uh, imagine what it looks like. Imagine the shape of the curve. Okay, so making a sketch of this function would be very useful for us in trying to, um, you know, in trying to sketch, in trying to find the range. Okay, whenever you want to find the range of a function, making a sketch of it will be really useful. And when you have a function like this, which is a um, reciprocal function, especially when the domain is restricted as it is here, they've only restricted us to values of x greater than 2, we have to be careful when we are finding the range. Okay, because we might think we know what it is, and because of the restriction, it might be different than what we think. So what I would do is, I'm going to rewrite this function in a form which is easier for us to be able to sketch. And as we see, this is an improper fraction. I'm going to write this as a mixed number. Okay, and it's an improper fraction because the order of the numerator is the same as the order of the denominator. This is, you know, a linear numerator, and that's a linear denominator. And if the order of the numerator is the same or greater than the order of the denominator, it is an improper fraction. So this will split up into a whole number part, which will be a constant, plus a proper fraction where the numerator will be a constant as well because it, will, it has to be less than the denominator. So a um, very simple way of doing that for such a function as this is to what's called rewrite. It's called rewrite the numerator. So I have 2x minus 3 over x minus 2. So what I do is... I will rewrite the numerator. So I'll write the denominator as it is, x minus 2, and I will write in the numerator also the same thing. I just copy the numerator into the, the denominator into the numerator. Then I ask myself, I need to have 2x here. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. That will give me 2x minus 4. Okay. I, I need 2x minus 3. So I've got, I have to add 1 to this. That will give me 2x minus 4 plus 1, which is 2x minus 3. These are exactly the same. But what I can do now is I can split this into two separate fractions. One of them will be 2x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And the other one will be plus 1 over x minus 2. And now the x minus 2s here will cancel, and you're left with 2 plus 1 over x minus 2. Now we have a, a mixed number, which is something that's easy for us to make a sketch of and then work out what the range is going to be. So if I make a little sketch of this function, I'm not going to take much space, just a little uh, a sketch of this function here. All right, um, we're going to have an asymptote. Um, we can see the asymptote will be an x is equal to 2, because when x equals 2, this will be undefined. So x equals 2 will be one of the asymptotes. I'll just draw it over here. And you have another asymptote, which is a horizontal asymptote, when y is equal to 2. So let me just write this as f of x equals. When y is equal to 2, that will be another asymptote. Okay, that's, the, that's like, this is like a, a transformation of the graph 1 over x. Okay, so it's basically, it's, you know, the, the horizontal asymptote has moved up two spaces. The vertical asymptote has moved to the right two spaces. So it's going to look something like this. You'll have your horizontal and your vertical asymptotes. Let me try and make it a bit more evenly, like a square it should be, because it's the same length, 2 and 2. So that's x equals 2, and that's y equals 2. Okay, so that's where the asymptotes will be. Now, if the question did not state that x is greater than 2, then I would not only draw this part of the function, I'd also draw a part on this side. I can also draw a part, part on this side, and I have to work out, for example, when x is 0, y is going to be positive, isn't it? Because it's going to be 2 plus minus a half. It's going to be 1 and a half. So it's going to, 
actually pass through the y-axis on the positive side so it would look something like this okay but because we are only restricted to x values which are greater than 2 I'm going to get rid of this part and our function will only be existing when x is greater than 2 so let me just to make it a bit clearer let me just redraw that a bit so you can see what I'm going to try and say here so basically this graph is going to come from up there and it's going to come down and it's going to reach this asymptote of y equals 2 so the range of this function as we can see the range of this function as we can see from this diagram is y is greater than 2 okay so the range is y is greater than 2 so you know that's what we can say if we want to write it in the same um, what x is sorry if we want to write it in the same way as it's written above there same format we can say that the range is y or f of x if you want is an element of the real numbers okay but we can see that y is greater than 2 okay y is greater than 2 so there we have our solution okay our range for this particular function because we can see that the y values of this function will start from 2 and above the reason being is because what's when x is less x is less than 2 is excluded from the domain so it's not going to go down here if it was if, if this wasn't mentioned if it was like this then we would say the domain or the range would be all real numbers except for y equals 2 except for y equals 2 because the graph would continue here and you would have this horizontal asymptote which would be the only value that can't be included but because they have a condition on the domain then our range is going to be restricted also by that same condition so our range will be from uh, y equals 2 above y equals 2 all the way to positive infinity which is that what which is what this means and we don't say equal to 2 as well we don't say greater than or equal to 2 because this line will never touch the asymptote so making a little sketch always helps us to understand what we're doing when we're finding the range okay there we have part a part b says show that f fx equals x for all x is greater than 2 so basically what they're saying is if we take the function f of x which is f of x equals 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 basically what they're saying is if we substitute this back into the original function okay into itself you're going to end up with the same thing you're going to end up with x they'll cancel each other out sorry so basically we'll we'll understand what this means in a minute uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to replace the x's in each of these with 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 so basically what this means is put inside the function f 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 so it means replace this x with all of this and replace this x with all of this so i'm going to make like a big fraction here okay so i have uh, 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 that's going to be multiplied by 2 that's your 2x and minus 3 all over and then I'll have x minus 2 so I'll have this 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 minus 2 so I've got like this big fraction here okay so what I'm going to do next to make it a bit easier is I'm going to write this as like this whole thing divided by all of this Okay, so that's what the fraction bar can act like brackets. So I'm going to write this as, um, I'll just expand that bracket there. I'll have 4x minus 6 over x minus 2 minus 3 divided by, and I'll write this as 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 minus 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these into one fraction. So this is like, denominator of 1 so these two will I'll make them into one fraction uh, with the common denominator of x minus 2 so I'll end up with uh, 4x minus 6 as it is then I have to multiply both of these by x minus 2 so I'll have minus 3 times x minus 2 and therefore I can write it under one denominator of x minus 2 and that's divided by I'll just keep it in bracket for now divided by and I'll put all of this also into one fraction so I'll have x minus 2 as my common denominator. This stays as 2x minus 3. And this has to be multiplied by x minus 2. Because this became x minus 2. And the top has to also be multiplied by x minus 2. So you get minus 2 times x minus 2. Keep that bracket there. Make sure that you have a minus there. Now we can um, expand. Oh, so we can, sorry. Um, yeah, expand and simplify. So you're going to have um, 4x minus 6. So you have 4x minus 3x, which is x, 
and minus six minus three times minus two. So minus six times minus three times minus two is minus six plus six. I'll just write it out like that for now over x minus two divided by, and here you're going to have two uh, x and you're going to have minus three and you're going to have uh, minus two x and you're going to have plus four. Okay, so minus 2x plus 4, and that's all over x minus 2. So this will give us x minus 6 plus 6, which is x. And you'll have 2x minus x, which is 0, and minus 3 plus 4, which is going to be 1. So this is x over x minus 2 divided by, and this gives you 2x minus 2x, which is 0, minus 3 plus 4, which is 1. So you have divided by 1 over x minus 2. And now we can basically... Uh, when you divide, you write the, the second fraction as a multiplication, and you have x minus 2 over 1. And finally, okay, and finally, we're going to have these cancelling out. So you have x over 1, which is x. So we've shown that basically f, f of x is equal to x. Okay, so we'll hence write down an expression for the inverse of f of x. Well, we know that this is true. Okay, when you have an, a function and you have the inverse and you will find the composite of the inverse and the original function, then you always end up with x. Okay, because they cancel each other out. And as you've put f of x inside itself and you get up with x, that means f of x is the same as its inverse. They're equal to each other. The inverse and the original function are the same. So therefore, we can say an expression for the inverse of f of x is exactly the same expression for f of x, which is 2x minus 3 over x minus 2. The same as the original function. Okay, and we can see in the original function, if we look at the graph here, if we were to have uh, drawn this, okay, then we would have seen that this is a reflection in the line y equals x. Okay, this is the reflection in the line y equals x. I think you can see that. If I draw the line y equals x here, okay, you know, the, basically, they, they reflect onto each other. If you reflect this, okay, if you reflect this, it basically will give you exactly the same function. Okay, so you, you remember the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. And if you reflect, you know, you see the asymptotes, and everything's, everything's a mirror image. Even the places where it would cross the y-axis and the x-axis, if it was going to, if it, if it wasn't restricted, those would also be exactly the same points. The x-intercept and the y-intercept will be the same uh, value. Okay, but we don't have that in this particular graph. So this shows us that the graph is the fact that when we put f of x inside itself, we got x straight away. You should realize that means that's the inverse. It's the inverse of itself. Okay, the inverse of this function is itself okay just like the inverse of y equals x is also y equals x and there's other functions like that which also like the inverse of y um y equals one over x is also itself because if you drew y equals one over x oops that wasn't straight was it if you drew y equals one over x okay oops you know you you reflect it you're going to get also you know the same it basically reflects onto itself okay so like if you if you looked at it y equals one over x if you if you change the x for y and change the y for x and you you know find the inverse you're going to get the same thing it's going to be one over one over x at the end okay so uh, basically uh, whenever you have this situation where you in where you substitute a function inside itself and you end up with an x that means that function is its own inverse okay so it says hence write down you don't have to explain just the fact that you've shown that this is true is enough for you to be able to just write down that the inverse of f of x is equal to yeah, I should write it as this by the way here therefore the inverse of f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 over x minus 2 okay so there we have the answer for that question part a and part b and part c I think that was the whole question. Thank you for watching. Um, any other questions you need from this particular uh, Solomon L paper will be shown in this 
area over here any questions you have from the um, topic of graphs and functions from p3 you find in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel in this section over here and i'll put a card i think for the end of topic worksheet for functions and graphs at the top um, as i said thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon in another video